I actually never ever thought about going to medical school, but I was always interested in how science could be applied to understand human conditions. How does a cell work? Why is a protein in our blood so different from a protein in our skin? Or what makes our hair different colors or our eyes different colors? Everyone's different from everyone else. DNA is like the manual that produces each one of us. So we have this similar manual, but we all come out looking different. How does that happen? The attraction to doing medical research to me has always been that by answering important biological medical questions, the work that I do in the lab ultimately has an impact on human health. That before I retire, <laughs> there is a widespread treatment for Alzheimer's disease that's effective. I am the director of the Ronald M. Lowe Center for Alzheimer's Disease and Neurodegenerative Diseases. I run a center where we do research on neurodegenerative diseases, it's addressing many different facets of the disease. My other hat is as department chair for genetics and genomic sciences. We have within a single department the potential to go all the way through from very basic discoveries to treatments in terms of clinical trials. finding the first mutation that causes Alzheimer's disease. The irony is, you know, it took us several years to do that research back in the late 80s, early 90s. Now you could probably do it in a few weeks. So that just shows you how technology has advanced in genetics. Genetic and genomic approaches have really transformed how we think about Alzheimer's disease. It is possible to look at 100,000 or 500,000 individuals. And so that then gives you a completely different kind of picture on a different scale. The most important thing in genetics has been more recently the discovery of the role of the immune system and specifically of these cells in the brain called microglia. And that has also transformed research in Alzheimer's disease. 10 years ago, there were very few people working on the role of microglia because people thought that they were a response to the disease and not the cause of disease. I am deeply honored to be receiving the Peep and Brock Prize. This is a validation of everything that I've done over the last few decades in terms of my contribution to Alzheimer's disease. It's a recognition by your peers, and that's probably one of the most important things, is that your peers recognize the value of your research. This takes a village. It's not one person in isolation. It's not even one lab in isolation. It's teams around the world working together that's important. And I play a role in this, and I'm glad that I'm being recognized. We're just one cog in a much larger wheel that is Alzheimer's disease research. The landscape of our knowledge has changed dramatically, and that makes me a lot more hopeful for the future. Thank you.